Chindia is still a buzzword among private equity investors. Speaking of uh, Blackstone, the emerging markets of the PRC and the subcontinent are top of the agenda in 2010 for the $5 billion Auda International Organization. Pak uh, Seng Lai is Asia Managing Director of Auda, which is the private equity arm of the Quant family, one of the top industrial families in Germany, which uh, also controls, of course, BMW. I knew I had heard that term before. Pak Seng, Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year. Uh, private equity in 2010, what's the outlook and do a comparison check between what you're expecting to happen in your space this year and last year? I think um, 2009 is a year of recovery. There's been quite slow activities in the first quarter after the crisis, and things in Asia began to pick up, especially in India and China, around the uh, end of Q2. Mm -hmm. And now it's just business as usual. So I'm quite optimistic about next year. I think things, deal flow in terms of fundraising is going to come up to probably close to the level of maybe 06, may not be as high as 07, mm -hmm. but things is like business as usual. Right. Now, I don't want to, I don't want to act like, uh, you know, private equity and portfolio equity are mm -hmm. necessarily, you know, I have loggerheads. You're, you're not exactly rivals or anything like that. But we've been doing a story uh, in, in the last 24 hours about the, there's really no let up in the kind of companies that are uh, hitting the markets in Shanghai and Shenzhen. We're talking tens of billions of U.S. dollars in uh, new fundraisings. Does that sort of up the pressure on you a little bit? Does it raise the participation cost of mm -hmm. being in the private equity arena? Uh, you're talking about competition for deals, I guess. Yeah, I mean, when you yeah. have a lot of companies that are ripe for, 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 for taking public, mm -hmm. and yet, you know, you're, you're, you're in the capital space, you're in the venture space, the okay. PE space. Does it make it a little more difficult? Does it close the corral, you know, the ranch a little um, bit? Not, not really. If you look at private equity, actually, the uh, stage of investment is much earlier. And usually the holding period is between two to three years mm -hmm. before you go IPO. So I don't see the public market as exactly competing with private equity. But I do see a lot of competition among the private equity firm itself mm -hmm. with the billions of dollars raised, especially in the uh, large cap sector. We see uh, in general deal size of around 50 million and above. Mm -hmm. It's quite competitive within uh, China and India itself mm -hmm. for two reasons. The first reason is that the supply of these deals are very limited. Given the emerging nature of this economy, there are not that many big companies to buy. Mm -hmm. But for the last few years, a lot of global names, a lot of uh, local funds have expanded their fund size to billion dollars. And all these monies are chasing after the same deals. Mm -hmm. and, and for the last few months, we see a lot of state-owned enterprise and um, local conglomerates with a lot of cash trying to pursue the same targets. Mm -hmm. So a lot of money chasing after the same big deals. And we see a lot of competition right there. Well, that's not, that, that's not desirable then, is it, for a player like you, when not just out of, but others. I mean, if you're competing against a big, mm -hmm. huge gun, you know, like a Blackstone or something mm -hmm. like that, um, what happens? I mean, do you win? Do you lose? Do you, do you draw? I mean, at five billion, you're not chump change, but you're also not, you know, a top three or top ten player in the private equity space either. So does that, th th does that mean you aim for different targets, maybe things that are out of the sights of other yes. places? Does, does it become more of a partition market this year? Yes, I think, I think there's a two-tier market in, in China and India. There's the big, large cap, and then mm -hmm. there's the small and medium-sized enterprise, and there are millions of them. So for us, we are, technically, we are fund of funds. So we invest in fund managers, which will deploy our money into different sectors and regions. And we begin to choose funds that focus on the small and medium-sized enterprise. Mm -hmm. I think in that space, it's much uh, less competitive. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are estimates of millions of SMEs in, in China and India. And it's a very fragmented market. Mm -hmm. So a lot of proprietary deal source. So we are actually focusing on that sector to avoid the competition with the, the big guys. Right. We had a report, we've had been running a report there throughout the morning show today about a bounce back in factory utilization. Mm -hmm. You know, the kind of uh, the manufacturing expansion after uh, the crash that we saw in the last couple of years. Does that mean that a company like yours starts to play on the industrial theme, the export theme, the, the business of making things and selling them overseas once again? Or is that not exactly ripe uh, for investment at this stage? I think for private equity, most of the private equity firms have begun to shift their investment focus from export-oriented companies to more domestically focused companies mm -hmm. uh, over the last few years. I mean, export business is extremely competitive. Investing money into a contract manufacturer with razor-thin margin is very difficult to generate returns on equity. So there's a lot of uh, focus on the domestic consumption. Mm -hmm. so, so, do our, so do we. So we've been focusing on funds that actually focus on the local consumers. And I think it's a big theme going forward. Um, when you talk about the domestic theme, what are you, what are you talking about? Are you talking about durable goods? Are you talking about the automotive space? 
Are you talking about maybe non-listed property companies? Are, are, you, are you trying to identify, say, maybe the next Gome Electrical Appliances or the next uh, Lianhua Supermarkets or something uh, like that in China? If you could identify something like that mm. at the very, very early stages, you've got a winner on your hands, correct? That, that is true. That is the rule of private equity. And uh, in terms of sector, it's very diverse. I mean, China is a huge economy. And the, co the domestic consumption sector, basically, it's, it's just, you know, very diverse, ranging from things like what you mentioned, retail, supermarket, to maybe financial services and e-commerce. I think the, the major theme is, is the emerging middle class. Uh, urbanization is creating an a emerging middle class of consumers, which is estimated to be around 200, 300 million. Mm -hmm. And they need a lot of new products because of the fundamental shift in terms of consumption patterns. So a lot of private equity-backed companies are actually serving this, this segment. And within the domestic market itself, uh, there are three areas that we are paying a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. The first is actually consumer products, like what I mentioned before. Mm -hmm. When there's a shift between uh, uh, lifestyle from rural to the, to the city areas, you tend to consume different things. I mean, you start buying coffee or start going to retail chains mm -hmm. when you move to the city. And a lot of private equity money actually are focusing on that. And the second area is actually green energy. Mm -hmm. I think it's a very hot uh, sector right now, and it's uh, one of the top priorities of the government. And mm -hmm. pollution is a very serious problem right now in mm -hmm. both China and India. And it's so serious that certain cities may not be livable if nothing is being done in the near future. Mm -hmm. So this is getting politically uh, important for the Chinese government, for the Indian government to pay a lot of attention. And it's a brand new sector mm -hmm. with multiple uh, different, uh, different opportunities from uh, wind and solar energy to mm -hmm. uh, biomass to water treatment. Mm -hmm. And each of these sectors has a whole supply chain of opportunities for investments. Right. How do, you, how do you navigate something like energy, though? Because that has a very, very big public interest component in it. You can't just, as a private equity player, go in and say, ah, that's going to be a winner. It's a free-for-all. It's a free, laissez-faire free market. I mean, there's a lot of municipal, there's a lot of federal government uh, intervention and participation in the setting of rates and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it must be a nightmare in, in many ways to sort of to try to uh, navigate a space like this? Well, the first is not to be too ambitious to do, do, do everything. You can't be experts in every sector. I think there are certain concentration, maybe some, certain farm managers are focusing more on the wind and solar energy. And then and you have to look at the kind of capital that's chasing after the deals. Mm. If for deals there's too many people chasing after the same kind of business, mm -hmm. you try to avoid them. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, it's, a, it's a mixture of both top-down analysis and bottom-up analysis. Okay. Pak Sang, thank you very much for joining us, okay, with a little thank insight you. into uh, what often seems like a somewhat secretive space because it's, you know, obviously private equity as opposed to public equity.